Okay everybody, it is Friday, January 29th and it is time for my sketchbook review. Uh, this week we have a little bit of digital and we have a little bit of traditional. So I'm going to do the traditional first because this is a weird angle to have to do it at. And then I'll move it over into my traditional areas. Um, first up we have, we have Jade. She's... Well, Rex kind of officially happened. Um, you guys should hop on over to the duck first and kind of check things out and see how the role play sites uh, kind of everybody's starting over. Not necessarily completely. Some people are, some people aren't. Um, but it's kind of a way to sort of put everyone at the same level of starting out and then that way new relationships and things like that can form within the role play. Because some people have been role playing the same character in the same timeline for like 10 years now. So they kind of did a bit of a hard reset and I figured I would do some art for it. Um, Piper coming back or post recticon is actually quite a bit younger. She's 18. Technically if I had done the math right and everything I was supposed to do she would have been like 15 or 14 and I didn't want to play a character that young so I bumped up the age just so I could actually play the character and not feel like weird. So yeah. So she's parkouring her little heart out. When she's younger, she's a lot more reckless. Um, gra she learns about gravity later on. <laughs> um, she's very reckless, but she's very positive, very happy, very outgoing. And I know that that's going to change later on. It just kind of depends on the situations that happen. But starting out, she's got that initial energy of uh, a person who just stepped out of mom and dad's house, which is like quite literally what she did. And they're getting their life together and they're doing it on their own. So she has that initial gumption. And it's going to fade as responsibility sits in. Or, yeah, basically as responsibility sits in. So with her, it's going to be like an entire growing process, which is really awesome. Um, before, I kind of started her out as she's already an adult, already got herself established. And it wasn't as fun because I didn't get to develop anything. So now I actually get to develop something. So yay. Uh, this is that 1940s Piper. I showed the sketch last week. The colors I picked, I tried to keep them muted, as muted as possible, because I wanted to go for something in the era. And when I was looking at clothing and everything in the era, it was either an earth tone or a very grayed out tone of some kind. There weren't as many vibrant colors, uh, so I just kind of stuck with that theme. And since her main color in HAS is purple. I just kind of went with that. I was like, a form of purple. It matches her tone so well. It matches her eyes so well. So I stuck with it. Um, I really, really, and zoom in here this way instead of, whoops, new mouse. Uh, I really enjoyed the details in her hat that I was able to get. Very, very happy with that. Um, it was... It was a challenge because I don't like adding in, like I've said before, I, I skip details because I'm terrible. But <laughs> I didn't this time. I actually went in and colored each petal and shaded each petal. I'm like, you can't even see it when it's zoomed out, but I know it's there. So that makes me happy. Okay, and then here's the other 1940s Piper. The details in the hat aren't as much. I kind of changed them a little bit and I kind of changed the shape of the hat a little bit for the second, the first picture that I showed. Um, cause this, this was actually the one I did first. I got my colors picked and everything. And then from there I went over to the full body one. Um, this one turned out really, really, really nice. I love it. Her expression's nice and soft. The shading is really nice and soft. The colors are muted. They work with her natural skin tones. And I started doing the shading, the eyelashes. And I know that I've had commissioners before say that they absolutely hate that. That's cool, but... I like it and when their hair is darker like Piper's is, I think that that shading is a bit more excusable. I think that the only time that coloring in the eyelashes is really really weird is if it's like a white hair tone because I've seen that. I used to do that with um, Inuyasha fan art. And I understand where they're coming from because it does feel very artificial. Um, but with my darker skin or my darker hair tones, I tend to like to do that. It just it adds a little something extra. Preference. This is page one of Piper's backstory. I'm not going to just zoom in on it or anything like that. I'm just showing you guys the art real quick. Page two of the backstory. And as you can see, I have difficulty um, making consistent side characters. Because he goes from that to that. It's like two completely different characters. I'm such a loser. But um, I'm going to work on that. 
that's a, that's one of my goals is to work on it the second goal is to not waste so much space um like in this picture like this whole bottom area is one big waste of space i didn't need all of this um absolutely not so that's something else i'm working on as i'm doing the comic is i'm kind of reminding myself what it is to do comics and all the rules and everything because I used to do this for a living and then I went to nursing school so yeah and I, I love my inconsistent um uh what are those called I can't remember my breaks my panels yeah my inconsistent panel width but whatever um but yeah that's page three and I hate this last panel it's just I threw it together really quick and it just didn't look right and I knew it didn't look right but I just went with it anyway should know better page four I get a little bit better here start pulling things together this this right here is just not doing it for me but it's okay that was a good panel right here I like the hair thingy and then this was a pretty good panel but drawing her standing up in a big old dress and making it make sense was pretty difficult and this page was this page is okay. I like this page. I really like that expression right there. She's like, nee. But, um, I tend to go from very busy pages to very light pages, and I'm trying, again, not to do things like that. See, because this was a very... The page before it was kind of busy. One, two, three, four, five panels. This one is three panels, and then the next one is one, two, three, four, five, six panels. So, I tend to flip-flop between them, and I really need to stop doing that. Um, this is page six by the way so this was the last one I was putting up or have put up and you guys can see all of this on my DeviantArt there's a folder in my gallery dedicated to Piper's backstory they're all right there I post them on Tumblr and I post them on my Fur Affinity so yeah and that's it for the digital stuff so let's go on over here to traditional now with my digital stuff like I've said before like a bajillion times I don't tend to like to show it because I upload it in so many different places that it's hard to miss but I know that with YouTube um, people can miss it because they're looking for my art on my YouTube channel or in my in my sketchbook review videos so if you ever wonder what I'm working on or if you ever wonder you know exactly what why my sketchbook reviews are light or anything like that check my galleries because if they're full of a lot of colored work then that's what's going to be taking up my time i am not very fast at colored work because i'm still learning how to do it correctly so yeah speaking of colored work i did do one traditional piece this is oh my goodness i have to look up her name again it's a maki Nish nishikino from i don't know what to be honest um it was a request and that's why I don't really know anything about it. I meant to look more into it and I just did not have the time or the energy. Um, and I wanted to get the commission done because I, I felt it was unfair that I got one person's commission done and I dragged my feet on sending that out. And as a result, this one got pushed back even further. So, but it's done. I think like I did a really good job. I think I caught the character correctly. Um, it was all Copic. I used a little bit of Prisma to kind of darken the red a little bit, but other than that, yeah. I had to do this a couple times because of my stupid brush pen. Like, it's not my brush pen's fault. The ink just would not dry. I went and I took like an hour and a half long almost nap trying to wait for the ink to dry and it just was not doing it. But it was what it was and I actually got this done and there's not too many smudges in it. So I'm very happy with it and I'm happy to be sending it off to the winner. Um, I believe we ended with 1940s Piper last week. If not, then it's just a little bit of repeat. Uh, finalized sketch of Scarlet as a succubi, and I think, succubus, and I think I'm going to finish this one up. I kind of like her design. Um, it's very, I don't know, sinister. I'm enjoying it a lot. And I want to finish it, so I think I will. Um, it's not how she is anymore. Again, Recticon happened, so she's back to just being regular old Scarlet. Uh, drew a picture of mouse pips kind of chilling and hanging from a ledge of some kind. This I was just kind of doodling while I was watching Les Miserables. And uh, it's um, Eponine's song uh, on my own. And then I was drawing Cherry on a bird. But it turns out I cannot draw birds very well at all. So I still have the idea in my mind. I just need to look up some references. And here's where you could tell I was starting to feel sick. And I got really sick on Monday. Um, 
I just kind of kept my mouth shut about it and it went into Tuesday and I went to the doctor and things are getting settled now but I got very very sick and I was in a lot of pain I've actually been in pain for the entire week it's just now starting to clear up completely so yeah I was just it was pretty bad <laughs> I was I was in tears and trying to smile through it but yeah so I was drawing a picture of Mouse Piper versus some sneak that's gonna eat her and it's sad I don't know who's gonna save her someone's gonna have to save her anyway and then I was drawing uh, Piper as a human and then I was like I can't draw humans anymore so of course I'm gonna draw human heads because I had difficulty with one so now I have to make myself draw a few of them this was a brown rice recipe that I found and I not brown rice but fried rice recipe that I found and I tossed it on there and then I tried it last night and I messed it up yay uh, I needed some male mouse characters because someone needs to escort um, a Piper to a trading post ish sort of place I don't know what it would be called back then like it's like a pit stop but whatever um so one of the HAS creators has her own little uh, comic strip called uh Sharky and Smiles I think it's called Sharky I, I don't actually know what the title of the strip is I just know who the character characters are I'm terrible like that but I took their stick it's a stick figure comic by the way it's really awesome uh I took their stick figures concepts and made them into mice mice mices and I asked her if I could go ahead and use this, the designs in um, in my comic. Because, I mean, they're just basically walking her down the road. And they said, yeah, it's fine. Or she said, yeah, it was fine. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then here I was trying to explain the difference to somebody between male honeybees and female honeybees. Okay. Male honeybees are like the Jersey cow of the world. They are adorable fluffy giant big-eyed beautiful things and female bees are not and the only reason i know is because i'm very allergic to bees but people like freak out on me because i play with them like i'll put pictures of me playing with bees like letting them crawl on me on my facebook and stuff they don't realize that it's a male bee they don't have stingers male honeybees do not have stingers they they basically are just big gigantic gentle giants um they mate with the queen and then basically they die well not really die but they do get kicked out of the hive in the winter because that's when I was playing with a lot of them was we have our honeybees and right before it hits that first really good frost you could tell it's coming because they start kicking the male bees out I went out there um, to go take something to the fire pit and there's like four little male bees just crawling around on the ground I was like Nyee! so I picked them up and I played with them I mean they're gonna die anyway because they injure them before they drop them out of the um, hive but um yeah but they're very very gentle and I, I like male honeybees I just do not like female honeybees because they sting that makes sense so cool. um this was in response to that first picture I did of Jade where she's uh doing the parkouring uh she has so much hair and she leaves it down when she does her theft thieving thieving thefting and I just thought it was funny because like in the real world it would totally be wrapped around her and just in the way so I did this kind of as a snarky reply to that thank god for cartoon physics um I doodled this which ended up leading to a role play of a kind it did lead to a role play it was a pretty sweet one but basically um Jade gets past uh Frank this is Frankie who is um Al's character uh uh Again, it's a har it's one of the Harp and Stars creators. That's how we know each other is through the Duckverse. But um, I'm trying to think. No, I don't. I'll have to link her stuff below. She does have a Tumblr, but I don't. I'll link. Oh, I don't have anything of hers I can link. It's all Harp and Stars. Well, whatever. Same person. Anyway, back to the point. Uh, mad genius, awesome creator, mad scientist makes lots of. Uh, security systems very smart very very smart and then Piper somehow that's Frankie anyway that just in a nutshell and very excitable um and very short uh and where's neon fluorescent colors whatever all right back to the point Jade uh found her way in past a little bit past her security system like she got in but she still triggered something so it was like 
she did and she didn't but she was really good at it so whatever but frankie realizes that someone's breaking in and she goes and she like is ready for him she like stacks up all these boxes and is right pointing and asking how which is better than you know saying freeze you're under arrest but no oh it turned out really cute so i was happy with it and then I, I was going to do a whole series of that. And then there was Jade coming down a rope. And then Frankie was going to be down here screaming why again. But duck bills from underneath are really stupid to draw. So I was like, this is a dumb idea. So yeah. And I was just going to do like a whole bunch of those. Like little scenes of her jumping up and screaming why. But then like I got sick. So <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't happen. Um... And then just the other night, I was starting to feel better, so I started drawing again. And I drew a picture of French Maid Piper. Now, why she would be dressed up as a French Maid is beyond me. It was suggested maybe she's trying to sneak into some place to steal something, which is a possibility. I'm, I'm not opposed to it. Um, but they were saying it more for the fact that they wanted to see her parkouring in a French Maid outfit. So, I know where their mind's going. But that's how, that's how it is. But she's just... I don't know. I've never drawn a character in a French maid outfit before, and Piper seems to pull it off. She's just too stinking cute. In whatever form she's in, she's just too stinking cute. But when you have a positive, happy character, they tend to be that way. And I tried to do, like, a little butt pose, like, little ooh-la-la -la pose, and it just kind of looked ridiculous. And then I started focusing on more action sequences, because I want to do more artwork with her as a duck. And technically, it could transfer over into her mouse form as well because she is a thief and it requires a lot of crawling and climbing and jumping and things like that. So it, it'll transfer over. It's not a waste of time. It's just I'm very bad at action poses because I refuse to do them. Most of my stuff is portrait or pinup style. So I'm pulling myself away from that a little bit, trying to not scare myself completely away from the idea. So here's one of the poses I did, which is basically she's just doing a jump. Um, and it works i kind of feel like the arm should come down a little bit more and go down so because her center is here and i think that the hand needs to be a little bit closer to the center for it to work but it still works and all the swirly dudes for her hair are so happy Ooh. um i was doing i was watching and learning about tutorials on jumping now this is incorrect because i re-watched it and i think that just i don't know it might have been a different kind of jump, but I know you never heel strike on your jumps. You always t you always follow the foot strike, because you will just snap snap city if you do this. Like seriously, snap city. I knew that from martial arts too, so I was like, Ugh. and I knew it drawing it, but I drew it anyway because well, that's what the reference looked like. But uh, I didn't really like how the pose turned out, so I just kind of gave up on it, and I was like, it looks like she's just gonna Hulk stomp something. So I wrote Hulk stomp. This was supposed to be a picture of her. This is her coming down from, from above here. She's going down in this direction and she's grabbing onto something as she's falling. Unfortunately, it just, it doesn't look like that. So <laughs> I failed. <laughs> it's okay though, because failures, you're still learning. So I'm happy. And then Piper doing a handstand, which I've drawn handstands since I could remember. It's still a very posed position. Um, I understand center of gravity. Like, you can go out from the center of gravity, but as long as the majority of it is in the center, then that's how your character should be lined up. And, of course, palms there. Um, and then I drew Piper stretching and yawning. And then I got her over here stretching. Um, she's hugging her legs. It just... I probably should have just put her arms down to make it make more sense, but whatever. She's hugging her legs. And then down here, she's just kind of stretching out a little bit, too. I like this one. I might actually finish that one. And I was trying to do an otter girl because I, I don't know, I was brain farting. So I drew an otter. It's kind of cute. Kind of like her hair. And then Piper got a job at a club. As, I, I can't pronounce this. Azimo, as Azimariosis. I don't know. As, I just call them as. And she's going to be helping with uh, the bar and stuff like that. <clears throat> and there's a dress code and I'm going to finish one of these images. I haven't decided which one. It's probably going to be this one though. And like the dress code is red shirt and black 
pants or black skirt or whatever. So I dressed her up in the way that I would like to be dressed up. Uh, I got a nice little red blouse going here and then a nice trumpet skirt. I love trumpet skirts. I don't have the body for trumpet skirts, but I love them. And of course, she's going to be sensible and wear a nice wedge instead of high heels. Yeah. And then I was trying to draw Morgana for a um, profile picture and I kind of failed. I was trying to draw a wedding pose and I failed and I drew Nega Piper and all of a sudden I can draw the little slut. So there she is, Nega Piper in all her slutty glory. She likes them big. Her and Piper have the same thing. That's the best part about those two. They like bigger guys and it's not hard to do because she's so small but I just thought it was funny. Pi like this Piper would never say it. Other Nega Piper all over it. She sees somebody big she's like on it like wet on water whatever whatever sort of thing you want to say anyway so here's Piper and she's just kind of serving drinks she's getting ready to give somebody some shots and then as she gets more comfortable in her job like her skirts will vary I, that's the fun part about dressing up characters is you can change their clothing whereas you can't and like I don't have cute skirts so I gave her a little flounce skirt and then I had like this really intricate sort of stringy top portion here but then I covered it up with an arm and I was like well I just wasted all that time but I think I might finish this one too and then it, right now her current role play is she is stealing some rose gold jewelry and it's awesome but I and this was supposed to be from that but I don't know I think well, that's just a sketch, so whatever. But I think I will end up finishing this one. But that is it. I wanted to show you guys this. I got this tiny little itty bitty day planner. It's a moleskin. And I've seen other artists doing it to like put little drawings and stuff in. Because it's blank sheets. And it's got days of the week on it. And I've already kind of started. This one um, didn't turn out very well. But it's mostly to kind of promote drawing every day. Like I haven't even started today's really. Um, but I kind of like it. It's got a very nice feel to the paper. It's very soft paper. So I think I'm going to try to keep up with this, but I've been working so big lately that working small is a challenge, but maybe I need that challenge. So I'm not opposed to it either, but it's really cute and it's very small so I can take it with me everywhere. And I think it holds pen pretty well. So I'm going to give that a go. But if you guys liked what you saw, in today's video then feel free to like and subscribe i might have a speed paint going up I, i'm still on the fence about whether or not i'm gonna put it up i'm very disappointed in it but um so that might be coming this weekend i don't know we'll see uh but if you liked what you saw in this video feel free to like and subscribe comment below um and i think that's it so i will see you guys in next week's sketchbook review